you know, one of the most, uh, the most funny things about um, going to visit somebody, be, visiting somebody and the person being busy and not making time for you. How many of you have seen it before? Is it nice? Will you come again? You won't come again. Is it likely God has never come back since the last time he visited you? You could not put up the TV. You could not put down your phone. You were all about you. Am I not beautiful? Am I not handsome? Look at me. With the And then look at me. It was all about you. The whole date, because it's in your house, it's all about you. Listen, when you have not visited a great person, you think you are great. You think you have it all until you meet somebody who has it. Sometimes you think you, you, you are the best until you meet the best. In your village, you are the village champion. I tell people that if you are in Accra and nobody wants to marry, you go to the village, you'll be the queen of the village. You, you'll be the queen. If they do beauty contests in the village, you win. Accra, you'll not even pass a year first. <laughs> no, this is crying foul. This is crying foul. But if you go to the village with your ekume kume and your slang hojai, I think I'm not teaching well, right? Am I teaching well? So he came to you. If somebody visits you, the best thing you can offer him, he, he, him or her is your selflessness. It is me you came to. Everything I'm about and doing is about you. Everything is about you. Nothing in this world can satisfy. If even you, you don't like the food, let's take it that doctors say don't eat okra, and you realize that your guests like okra, you do okra for your guests. Is it true? It's not true. The food you will never have cooked. Maybe you don't eat salad. You do salad that day. And you force yourself to eat some. Is it true or is it not true? Yeah. And that is when, if you go there, if you, if you are a guest and you go to somebody's house, and let's say that you go, they are eating fufu, and you are eating some of the food, and you realize that your guest has put the spoon down and using the hand. The, I see your guest, your, the, the, the house owner, the host is using their hand to eat rice. It is advisable you also put your cutlery down and join him in that foolishness. There's a level God can condone your foolishness because it's in your house. But if he wants to take you to your next level, you must also come and condone to his lifestyle. If I come to your house and he asks you entering, you remove your shoe. I remove mine. He goes, oh, pastor, pastor, I still will remove mine because you have removed your shoe. If I see that you entered with your shoe, I will also enter with my shoe. What am I to say? People treat you the way you treat yourself. You don't like how God is treating you. That's how you've been treating him. God, and you, when I talk to you, don't mind me. Excuse me. Do you mind him when he talks to you? See, Adrian. When he said, I've bought something for you at a shop there. Go and pick it. You must be there by nine. You got there at eight o'clock and called him and said, please, they've no opinion in the shop. I said, but I told you nine. Ah, oh, I'm waiting. But when he said he missed you, he wanted us to meet. It was 10.30 and you had not come. When he called, you said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not taking my bath. And you didn't feel anything bad about it. You were cool and collected about it. Right from day one, you just showed God you are in for what you will get and not for a relationship.
How does God knock? There are so many ways he knocks. Sometimes he uses nature to knock. Sometimes he uses what? Nature. He uses nature to knock. Look at, look, if you, if you really want to see the goodness of God, watch Animal Kingdom. See how the animals behave. It will show you the nature of God. How did God draw the attention of Moses? A burning bush. Nature. Moses never heard God's voice. What attracted him was a bush. Exodus chapter 3. That was burning. And yet it was never finishing. The leaves were still green. What kind of fire is this? What, how would a bush be burning for years? And if you watch the Ten Commandments, Moses asked Jethro, who, who is up there that is always smoke up there? And Jethro said, he's the God of the Hebrews. He stays there. Then Moses then he said, he's going to say, don't go. If you go, you will die. Nobody goes there and leaves. He said, Moses said, I need to talk to this God because I, have, I know his people. They are suffering in Egypt. Then go and tell, tell him something. He, he, you see, most people, people think that if they meet God, the things they will tell God, shut up. There is nothing you will say when you meet him. And I'll get there. Moses gets to the mountain. He's the one going to tell God. God tells you, you are the one who is going. Wait a minute. I came to tell you about your people. I know, I know my people than you. Oh God, you are not getting it. The problem you are talking to me about, I already know it. I needed somebody who will give me attention. For years, nobody has looked at this tree that is burning and you have come here. Then God said, you are in my territory, Moses. Remove your shoe. This is my land. My land here, you don't step here with your shoes. I, I dictate how you enter my presence. Remove your shoe. <laughs> Moses removed the shoe. In your house, you do what you want. In his house, he does what he wants. Many things, they can come to God and control God. You can never control this God. You see, God is in a class, a level all by himself. Am I teaching somebody here? Are, are you with me? Let me tell you this. If you want to meet even me, I have a daughter who sent me a message that she wants to see me. Actually, she called and I didn't pick from Germany. And then she sent me a message and I told her, I'm, I can't talk now. Then he said, well, what time? I said, call, send me a message on Monday. I'll give you time so that we can talk on phone. Even me, with my little debility, I give appointments. And you have to pay the price at the time I will give you to call me. I've had a lot of people want to call me from outside. And when they call me, I give them time. When they beat it one minute, I don't pick. Well, I have a lot to do. And they might say, I'm somewhere, please. And you think that you, dear, you are the type, if you are late or early, God must listen to you. If you have an appointment with the president of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. And you have to go. Let me tell you, you don't just get up and go to Flagstaff House and say, it is me, man. He's my uncle. Said, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. My office staff will tell you, even them, if they want to see me, they book an appointment. Oh, tell, ask them. You don't see me because I'm standing there, I'm free. Say, I have something to tell you. It doesn't work. I'll tell you, fix it. But in me, if I need you, you better be ready. <laughs> but if you want to see me, so daddy, I, I think you are sitting down quietly. Can I discuss? As soon as I hear the word discuss, book, you know my times that I'm free. Fix yourself here, let's have a meeting. And the problem with us is that we have become so, I don't know who taught us foundation class growing up. And we think that we can take this God and meet him every day. Of course, you can go to him every day and talk. But there are certain subjects you can't discuss with him every day. I saw you put something on social media. It is true, but it's not true. Let me take your seat. That was enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Enter his cause with praise. Now, the one who is entering his gates who has not gotten God in his heart, he must enter his gate physically 
by thanking God from their mouth. But you that has God in your heart, you don't open your mouth and thank God publicly. Your thanksgiving, you must always have a heart of thanksgiving. So if I'm asking someone to be thankful to God, it depends on your level of relationship with God. If God is already in your heart, before you open your mouth to tell God, God, give me something, you must first be thankful. Now, if you read the message Bible of some hundred, this is verse 3 or verse 5, it said the password to his entrance is thank you. The password. The password to that date to encounter God is thank you. It's an honor, Lord. To stand and worship you. Then key, give me a better key. It is just an honor. We lift our hands to the great I am who was and who is and he is to come. We lift our hands is that I am to the greater I am. Who can compare with you? That's what it started. Who, who is there like you? Oh God, you who created us in your life. Who is there like you? Oh God, this is the place that is an honor, Lord, to stand and worship you. We lift our It's just an honor. Who was and is? And is to come. We lift our hands to the great higher. Who can compare with you? And we will say that you are good. And all the miracles you you are entering, oh, you are still entering. You've not entered, the date has not started. And all the holes we have, we place in you. And we will say, You are good. And all the miracles. You are recounting some miracles. Some things he has done for you. He descended so low to come to your house. To visit you. To come and stay in your heart. To come and stay in that filthy heart of ours. For the we declare. We declare. Wait. Listen. Do you know the condition of your heart when he came to stay in your house? Without yet showing you his house. It was full of lies, deceit, fraud, Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, debunkery. Every thought of ours was evil. But yet he said, I'm coming to visit and stay with you. He accepted your condition and stayed in you. And now when he started giving him access, he said, can you throw this thing away? Can you leave this one? Can you get this one to go? He began to clean the place up for and when he started cleaning, and I said, can you now visit my place? I want to show you. And the day you go and visit, I'll get there. But the day you visit God's place, you will come back to your house and say, that, no, my house is still not clean. 
you cleaned it, but my house is not yet clean. Mesa, if you've not seen rich before, riches before, watch movies. You see somebody's house and you wonder, is this heaven or earth? So this house, do they sweep? Some houses, the air conditioning doesn't go off. Oh, I'm telling you, everywhere. Oh, oh please, oh. And you don't meet dust. Hey, you are a couple. You meet, you, you meet the house. I went to somebody's house. They didn't know where to even put me. This chair, this chair. I was there. They said this hall. They've lowered me, so they should take me to another hall. They have about three or four houses. They all look the same. I visited that house like three, four times. Every day when I go, they send me to a different. And meanwhile, everything is the same in each room. Today you go here, the man is staying here. The room is here. And when you enter each room, enter each place, you enter washroom. Please, oh. you enter washroom. You want to do fasting and prayer. They cook in the kitchen. I don't hear any scent. Hey, something tastes all the scent away. You poo poo the scent that didn't stay there. Something, hey, so what kind of world is this? Is this heaven or not? When it happens like that, when you come to your house and you open your door. That is what makes you do a washing. Oh, did you hear me? I said, that is what makes you do what? Because now you don't want to sleep in your house again. You want to go and sleep in the person who you are dating's house because there is more comfortability. May God introduce you to his house. Hey. When that is where you sing a song like a heart like yours is my desire. A heart like yours is what I'm searching for. Oh, the house was full of compassion. Nothing's wrong with him. Please hear me, Lord. Give me a heart like yours. But look, look, you've not seen his house. So how do you want his house? I entered a house years ago. I said, I want TV. I said, TV. Ah, before I realized, they just opened something. It looks like, um, how do you call it? Um, fun. They just spread it. Because I was a bush. I didn't know that it was. And this thing, projector was up there. Before I realized, everything was being shown on the projector. So I, I said, this TV is paper. <laughs> it was after I've gone there a long while that I realized that master, it wasn't paper TV there. There is a telly, something, something that was connected. I was sitting there, I said, hey, right here. When I came home, that time my TV was hunchback. It was colored, but the color can become red. So you have to use magnet to do this. Move it. Clear it. The day the man calls me, said, um, Pastor, can you please pay me a visit? I'll be there around 12, so I'll be there by 11. <laughs> because when you get there, oh, hallelujah. You see that Jesus is Lord. And I like, catch you and say, please, I'm going somewhere. Can we end the meeting now? You start to say, please let us pray. <laughs> Intention made the prayer very long because you want to spend more time in the place. You know why people don't spend time with God? They've never been on a date with God. God has never invited you to his place. He's always been visiting you in your house. So you think the standard is you. No. The standard is him. 
So I back to you think I've forgotten. Back to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. He said, The voice I heard said, Come hither. Come. Come. If you read, don't take me there. If you read Isaiah 1 18, you should say, Come. And let us listen. But first, he comes to you. Many have ended their relationship with God after he came into their heart. They've never visited God's heart. Let me tell you this. When you visit God's heart, one of your languages was that will stop is giving me. You see that that is an insult. But let me tell you this. When you get to a place where you have God's heart, you visit God's heart, and you are in God's heart, he already knows what is wrong with you. The position of the heart, the attitude of the heart, tells you what is wrong with your entire body. When you have God's heart, you are in his heart. You don't need to tell him what you need. No, you don't get it. If he has not given it, he knows why he's not giving it. You don't even ask. You don't even bother. Can we go on? Come hither! Come! So I will show you that there's more after this. I will show thee these things which must be hereafter. Until you come hither, you will not know what is after. Pastor Victor, the queen thing has come again. Where is that wine from? This, let it disappear. Where is he? The way my ears are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he tells me which verse to bring and which verse to hold on. When I hear things, sometimes I get confused. Look at him and say, come hither. You know what this means, I come hither? It means that the place he left you, you are still there. You are still there. Let me tell you this. Let's look at this scenario of a first date where God visits you. You know God is big. So when he's coming, if let's say he has to wear three-piece suit, he might decide to wear jeans and whatnot and come and visit you. And even in his jeans and t-shirt, when your family sees him, say, hey, look at who you have brought here. But when the other party is going to introduce you to his family, let's get that the lady or the guy, then the way my parents are, when you are coming, dress this way. Is it true or is it not true? Oh, oh, I'm not here with me. They tell you that, listen, the way my family is, if you really want to come and see my place, this is the dress. If you come to my house, Sweetheart, and you have a mini skirt and show your breast. If my dad sees you, he will tell me I brought a wrong lady. So, me, I like. But now that you are coming to my house, your composition must change. Why hasn't Jesus invited most of us yet? To his father's house, we don't want to change. But he knows that if he presents you like this to the father, it will not be well. So how? I don't think I'll finish the message today. But let me tell you this. On a typical date with God, please hear me. So many of you, your God talks too much. The God I know, he doesn't talk. He reveals. One statement from God can last a whole year. One statement from God. If God asks you, how are you? 
most of it, it is ne- God doesn't ask anything that has to do with him. Everything God asks, it has to do with you. If God tells you, I am God all by myself, it's not because he wants to tell you. It is not him that he's talking about. He's talking about you having a kind of mind knowing who he is. He's not saying it for it to be a big thing for him. He doesn't need it. So, a prophet. Some say a prophet. He was born a prophet. And Bible said, from your mother's womb, you are a prophet. He goes around prophesying. Everybody was clapping for him. Everybody was clapping for him. He prophesied. Then the king of Israel invited him. He prophesied to the king. He was prophet. Every day he was in the palace prophesying to the king. This is Isaiah chapter 6. The one where the king died. When the king died, for the first time, this prophet decided to visit God. So Isaiah chapter 6 says, in the year Kunuzia died, I, Isaiah, also saw the Lord. Why did he see the Lord after somebody died? Because let me tell you, one person, one thing, one character could be the reason why you have not invited to the marriage feast. Some say, oh, it, is it, it will shock you that even this kind of feast, being late, can be a reason why you're not being invited. You read the Bible, the foolish virgins who were late to the function, they got the oil, but they arrived late and the door was shut. Such attitudes doesn't bring you to the holies of holies. Because let me say, in the spiritual, in the spiritual world, times are closed and opened. So the pastor, how true? You see, I'll, I'll, let me prove this to you before I come to Isaiah chapter 6. Jacob, oh, I didn't want to talk about Jacob today. Jacob is alone because he's afraid his brother will come and scatter his boots. Look at all the Bible. Please, can I have your attention, please? Where's the keyboard? Is it the keyboard that's giving a noise? Look at Jacob. If you look at his father, Abraham, Abraham had covenant with God, built personal relationship with God. I don't want to go there. That it was because Abraham left Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Yes, it was Abraham's fault. He interceded and left it at 10. You should have gone to God. Don't do it. I'll talk to them. That's the extent to which Abraham was intimate with God. As for Isaac, he, he came to meet breakthrough. But when he came to Jacob, he tried to use the flesh to acquire every property he has. Once a while, God will intervene. He built two altars before then. But something very unique happened. Now, he needed God because his brother was about to kill him. So he told his first wife, go left, you and the children. Second wife, garden, (laughs) go right, you and the children. He, He divided all their properties. And they all left him. Nobody got no security man. Nobody was seen in the wilderness and was alone sleeping. Let me tell you this. God hardly visits your house if you are not alone. I didn't say suck everybody from your house. This is where you are in your house. But even though you are in the house, you are disconnected here from everybody here. The TV is on, but you are not watching. Effort, nothing, they ask you, did you see what is on the screen? Sir? Oh, what, are they showing the movie? Are you not here? No, my body is here, but I'm not here. When Jacob drove everybody away, and Bible said, and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled with him a man until the breaking forth of the morning. Now every season there are particular angels that come. This angel's time ends at 5 o'clock. He came between 3 o'clock to 5. He must go back. And when this angel was going, Jacob realized that this is the one who can change my destiny. He says that I won't let you go. And he said, what's yourself? You let me go. Hit this man by his junk. Wicked one. Because if he remains here, they will lock him out. The spiritual world will be locked and he'll be in trouble. He has a time to report. 
So spiritual world doesn't wait for you. You are 40 years, but the spiritual world is still zero years. Your, your activity has not started. People were 300 and something years before they met God. You dear, unfortunately, by 18, no way. And God has the patience. So you think that the whole world is... No, no, it doesn't happen. Like so when Jacob realized that it is some few minutes for him to go, he said, I know you can change my life. You're not going. They fought. It was a battle. A man wrestling with God. And he said, okay, if you want this message, I still want to go. What is your name? And the Bible said, my name is Jacob. He said, Kai, that is why the blessing is not coming on you. You talk like a Christian. Hey, you talk like an unbeliever. But your dressing was like a Christian. So your father, who was earthly, gave you blessing. But the heavenly God that we serve, he knows the heart. He knows that your talk. Oh God, you are not getting me. You see, you can, you can wear clarica as a pastor. But the demons know you are not. And God also knows you are not. You can deceive the other people. Let us pray. You can learn all the jargons of prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you praise. This morning, it is a privilege and an honor. And so, what, did, what prayer did Andrew pray? Okay. I turn this oil from his chemical composition to the blood of Jesus. You prayed it. Nothing happened because the demons know that you don't have. He could deceive Isaac. He dressed like Esau. But he spoke like Jacob. But when he met God, you can't, people go to God and they pretend. One thing, never tell God if you are not there. God, see how I saved you. Excuse me. God, you see what? Wait a minute. You should see how you are for what? Do you, do you know what it means to serve God? From you to form? Exactly chapter. Oh God, I don't want to do this today. Chapter 4, eh? God told, give me the NLT version. God told, I, oh God. Told a prophet. Lie by your left side for 390 days. You. You. How many days can God get you? Give me where he said you should lie down. We gave it on Friday. You should lie on his left side for 390 days. When he's finished with 390, you should lie on the other side 40 days. This you put in never complaint. I don't know if you can lie on one side. You move for 10 days for me. Let me see your hands. If you say we are doing a program, 10 days supernatural all night. Say, man of God, remember three. Look at what God told everybody. Let's read. I am requiring you to bear Israel's sins. Not, not your sin. No. The breakthrough, the people a man of God, F.D. Yale. You want bridge to be a mega church? There is a trouble in the church. Lie down on your left side for 390 days. When you die, roll another one, 40 days. Because 390 days, no bread. Now go at that side, 40 days. That's 430 days. Then I will satisfy your request. For the day of Pentecost, for the disciples to to have the Pentecost power come, they had to be there in the room for 50 days. The last 10 days was the most dangerous. 50 days! 50 days! How many days? 50 days. And you? So God, share me bread. What is bread? Don't go there. Your prayer should be, God, have mercy on me. I don't deserve. No, your key is mercy. Preaching here, I say your key is what? Sometimes I send people, I'm sitting here, go to my office, bring me this. They go, go to the office, bring me this. And say, Why didn't you tell me to bring all this at the same time? Yes. Even that is it up and down. Then you lie down 390 days. Something. Before you be born, your mother, because of how you be born, your mother can't drink any alcohol. 
your mother. It is not me who is going to be the Samson, but my child is going to be. So I have a life to live for my child to be that person. He say what? What are you saying? He said, God, look at the way I've given to support you. Calm down. How many? How much have you given? Do you know how much Solomon gave for God to come to him by night and tap him and say, Solomon, whether you like it or not, I'm going to bless you. You know how many goat, how many sheep? The man put it down. So, but because he had money, you to what you have, can you put it down? Look at someone say, Are you ready for some sacrifice? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. And can I tell you, this is what we call consecration. This is consecration. Living holy is not consecration. Living holy is the standard. If you are coughing today and you stop coughing, it's not a miracle in the spiritual world because you are not supposed to cough. You are not supposed to cough. Are, are you getting me? But if you are flying, hey, you say you are going to America and before we know you are there, ask which plane you use and your luggage is also there. Abba. Then we can now begin to look at you and say, what? You are, you are carrying something. And most often, people who went beyond themselves are the people that had the heart of God or God sending them for a visit. Many, Paul said, I know a man that went to the third heaven. Paul went first, second, and went to third. He encountered heaven before going to heaven. Some people have already seen heaven already. And they can't wait to go. 